Hello there everybody and welcome back to the channel after a long-ish, you know, couple of weeks break. Uh, I was abroad, I went back to the UK, so uh, had a few things to sort out there. But I'm back now in the US and there may be a job on the horizon, so I'm not sure how much time I am going to have to sort of churn out videos on a daily basis like I was doing. Perhaps every two to three days, there'll be one or two videos coming out. So it shouldn't be too much less going forward over the next couple of weeks. And um, we'll see where we go from there. But today, I thought we'd jump straight back in to our Starters Orders game. And uh, I took a look at the jumps game that we got going. I was a little bit confused as to what I was doing and where and why and when. And back to the flat. Let me ease myself back in. So... We've got four races today that I want to do to finish out the schedule I'd set up until the mid-March area. Um, I, I still don't know too much about these horses. Uh, I've had a little look at them and tried to remember who's who and who I really like. Now, Endless Shadow is a nice horse. I know that. This is a horse I had a lot of hope for. And really, when you're looking at the uh, Triple Crown races... The Preakness and the Belmont, of course, after the Kentucky Derby, which is my favourite race. Then, this does have a shot. Not a lot of cruising burst, but not not a bad amount either. Decent extra speed, decent finish. You know, the, there's a little bit to Endless Shadow, so... That's kind of the one I've got a lot of hopes for. Sweet Treats as well was another. I wasn't sure if they'd get the distance for those. Again, fairly similar, but less finish application, a little bit more cruising burst. So, I know my three-year-olds are in pretty good shape in that way. Gamma Bow is not, uh, just not in the running for the Triple Crumb. Despite having the distance, I just don't like some of the other stats she has. But who knows, maybe she'll surprise me. I might run them all three in the uh, Kentucky Derby just to see what happens. And then if any of the three wins or comes in the top two, they'll be my chosen horse for the second and third of that Triple Crown. So, where we are today is Peach Pipe having won her maiden and won it quite decently, nearly two lengths there. So, we've got a little handicap race, I believe, there. Then we've got an allowance race for Secret Dawn. Then we see Endless Shadow race and hopefully can get back to winning ways quite regularly after a little bit of a dip at the end of the season last year for it. And then we've got a nice grade three for Majestic Maiden. See if we can get some graded races on our two-year-olds. So that's where we are. Enough delaying. I'll have a look at all the horses in detail as they come up for races and whatnot. But here we go then, we're on the road first of all with Peach Pipe. And good cruising burst, not not too bad for a two-year-old. And then full bar for finish application, not bad extra speed. There's some interesting fare, interesting things there. Organ Pipe, good winner. And Peaches, of course, the daughter of Miss Swan, my first ever Triple Crown winning horse. So, good lineage to it, good lineage. Uh, top rated, but also top weight. And you can see they're only second favourite. So we're going here to Delta Downs and we will see what we can do in a night race. Okay, five furlongs. It's a handicap race. We are, you know, just that little bit better than anyone else. And the favourite is actually Good Deed in the red and white stripe. So, now this is not on the latest patch and this is not on the latest version of... Uh, the start it mod which is the mod i play which basically overhauls the entire north american racing scene and puts the courses in the right position it renames the tracks to the right things and also has a different schedule and whatnot it, it's a really comprehensive north american mod that i really like playing in so um i will have to update that at some point and have to update the game but this is currently just my regular version. This isn't the Steam version. I have played a bit of the Steam version on it. 
handles quite well, I've got to say. It does handle quite well. So Peach Pipe here, unless she's got a major kick in this last half of furlong, just is not going to do anything in this handicap at all. Good Deed does come first. Abby Jacaro, who was just behind us in, uh, yeah, in terms of weight, finishes second. So not that good a run. Really not a good run. But we'll get another furlong. So Peach Pipe should be at what? Six furlongs then, I guess. So that's okay. Let's just skip to the end of the day. So Peach Pipe. They're not quite doing what we want to do, but actually, yeah, that's probably a seven furlong to a mile horse now. So we'll have to find another race for them. Secret Dawn is up next, though, on the 6th of March. So that's just one day in the future. Let's go and find her and see exactly what we can do here so not one of the favorites okay competitive field everyone's up around the uh low to mid 80s there's a couple of high 80s and 191 there and uptown Bertie, of course 97 top rated favorites so it's interesting it is interesting there's only a few horses here that have won the race everyone else is sort of a, a roundabout inside the top four but i would have expected us to be rated a little bit higher i've got to admit that i would not have seen us rated this low going into this race but um okay i didn't check the silks but where is up tom bertie there we go so in that interesting check up tom bertie and uh, there they are, right on the inside. Right on the inside now, it's starting to fall to the back, and we're up near the front. Nice place to be early on, as long as we're not directly in the front and running ourselves into the ground. So, up to Humberti, still at the back. I'll start worrying if I see it jump a few places. They're all tied with each other. There we go, up to Humberti, starting to move up a little. They're all tied with each other back there. Three furlongs. If Uptown Bertie jumps another three or four here, then I'm going to be really worried about it as a closer. We're coming in now to two furlongs out. Uptown Bertie still down near the back. Not making too much of a move, but... Here come a few other horses. We are in the lead now as we enter one furlong. Here comes up Tom Bertie making a late run up the field. We're blowing away the rest of the field. Can anybody come in and actually challenge? Here comes Spindara. Wrong the outside of it is last romance, but nobody's going to get close. Up Tom Bertie may have got fourth, but uh, we absolutely dominated that race so i'm very happy with that actually very happy with that how far was bertie behind six lengths yeah that's why you don't bet on the favorite all the time so we did well we came in we beat a pretty competitive field got a good a good race under our belt a nice jump as well 12 rating points i'm very happy with that and of course the jockey's really really happy uh, he says that that trip was ideal, but we could probably now move up to seven furlongs or a mile with Secret Dawn as well. But 80% potential fully realized for this season. Hopefully a nice jump for a three-year-old season then. See if she can't get towards or over that 90 mark. But it's a decent horse, no finish. But, you know, I I've found that a lot. In some of the horses I've been breeding, they do lack finish application. So I need to take a look at why that is. Everybody's breeding and we got seven days. And we got nine days till the next race, so eight for the one before, which means we'll be one day outside of breeding if I skip. That's the worst that could happen. 
and it didn't happen because Ninja Girl did not breed that time. But everyone's a couple of days away, which means Endless Shadow is up next. We've got Starboard Bow and Retriever, my two older um, stallions there, siring their way through a lot of horses. And it is the end of the road for both of those. Starboard Bow with only four grade one wins, but a very, very nice horse. And of course, Retriever with over you know, 20 group wins, 20 group ones, two group twos and three group threes. That is a phenomenal outpouring. Not quite as impressive as Starboard Princess, of course, my top horse in this game. Not my top horse of all time. That was down the stretch or Miss Swan. They were both quite close, winning over 30 million prize money and over 25. I think 25 and 26. I can't remember which one had more Group 1 wins, but that is the most I've ever had. So they both came close. It's a very nice breeding barn, and it is producing some really nice horses. So let's hope that it keeps going and we can just keep upping the quality breeding the various bloodlines in with each other and here we go then endless shadow the first race of the season for the ultra impressive two-year-old now shadow did exceptionally well early on win the maiden wins two grade threes at six furlong up to a mile wins another grade three then we had to drop down to a low ones before going into a grade one where we finished third a grade three picking up yet another win over a mile and then we tested as well and just failed to win a grade one so we're always trying to find the right distance for endless shadow now we're in a mile two for a grade three race this should be a really good test and i think the distance is right but this is the start of seeing where the Endless Arrow can run and compete at this level. If we can find a mile two grade one race after this, if, of course, he wins this race, then, um, yeah, then I'm going to be very, very happy. So, one of the reds and the blue, they're the ones to worry about in this race so in the shadow nice around the outside not getting blocked off just gonna fall now into position just at the uh the front of that leading pack not getting blocked off at any time that's uh that's exactly kind of where i like my horses to race i know i've said that before but it really is so naughty behaviors in front proper man now dropping down behind in the shadow sea trade and tetravella with african rose and quijada looks to be separated a little there at the back of the field we're just coming round now to the end of this turn six furlongs left to run and the shadow just dropping back off the pace a little bit as proper man looks to go up and ride with naughty behavior at the front I think we're probably going to see on this turn a couple more horses joining in the shadow. Here comes African Rose starting to try and make some headway there on the inside. And at the end of this, we should see Endless Shadow jumping forward. Here we go. Maybe kicking on a little bit to move up where Proper Man sits. Or Proper Man may be falling back a little as well, but here we go two and a half furlongs and endless behavior now is right there with naughty behavior we haven't seen anything from kuhada african rose sea trade and tetra Vela in this race proper man's drop back kuhada's actually up to third naughty behavior now is dropping off as we enter the last furlong here in the stretch endless shadow on his own with no competition here comes kuhada it's a late charge for the line but he's not going to get close enough. There we go. A nice, simple win for Endless Shadow, exactly as we'd hoped.
exactly as we hoped. The rating goes up a few points. That is his fifth grade three win. Now we really do need to start testing at grade one. Distance was ideal and he enjoyed the race course. Nice. That is pretty cool. So we now know that there is a race course there for Endless Shadows. And uh, Sweet Treats not quite coming up in a grade two over a mile. Why was that? Okay, just not good enough, I guess. Two lengths out of it. So those are the two I really want to concentrate on over the next month or so because those are the two which have triple crown races in their future the two-year-old is just about getting as many graded races and testing them every single race peach pipe needs to bounce back everybody else has won their last race and superstar was the only one to not win her first uh, his first race so now it's time to test their majestic maidens up next with a grade three trying to get a graded race on but in the shadow still seems to be the horse to beat right now starboard bow and retriever let's go by let's see who's available to breed from how far down the list do we get they haven't got any group ones there we go we got some group ones so mile one Oh, sorry, mile two. Um, a mile two with retriever that might work. Get me a nice distance, and then starboard bow. And we're looking for where's that one gone? There we go. Laid back six furlongs, a mile four. I really like the starboard bow. I really, really do. So that could be an absolutely beast of a pairing. So starboard princess, of course. The sweet trando is a group three winner. Not, not too good of a horse there. Crimson star is a pretty good horse. 133 rating. Uh, not too bad there. Grand Sahara, of course. 15 out of 16 wins. I like the Grand Sahara. She was a good horse for us. And then, here we go. Starcat, not great. Yuther, not raced. Yeah, there's a few of those. We got some of the horses left over. So, not too bad. That bloodline has worked out really well from Starboard Bow. I am uh, pleasantly surprised because I, I didn't know whether the low amount of Group 1 wins would affect it too much. Like I say, I do like the horse, but I'm still learning the breeding side of things. Very professional. 8 out of 24. That's not great ratio, but it is one, you know, one every three, so that's not too bad. But only you know six of those were ungraded races. Only a 95 rating. Laid back, I do like. But I can't pass that on through breeding because it's a gelding anyway. Hmm, this, this is very interesting. So, group one handicap, we win. Group one handicap there, in fourth. Two and a half lengths behind. Won that one by two and a half lengths, okay. And it wins a handicap. Um, yeah, that's probably not as good a horse as it looks at first glance. So, we move it the way and we run things off with a majestic maiden run. We are at Gulfstream. Uh, class 1, Grade 3, Dirt. few unraced horses, okay, we're pretty much evens, but... Um, yeah... That's that's going to take some beating, according to the bookies. We are the 
overwhelming favourite in this race. So I would expect Majestic Maiden to win. So look what the tipsters have got. Two for us, two for Chatterer. Okay, who's Chatra? Fourth in a grade three. How far back? 7.2. Oh, was beaten by Castile Dreamer. Yeah, Castile Dreamer's a really nice horse as well. I think she's done for the season. We did race her, but she's actually done for the season from what I remember. So, Majestic Maiden. I have all the faith in the world. So, let's see. Can we continue our success here and get this done so chatra is the inside of the green horses so the nice gray with the green silks and the blue saddle number number three moving into second place behind its stable mate i think miss dixie in third majestic maidens in fourth gay music is back a little and then Miss Fernie and Kiss the Daddy at the rear. So there's a lot of movement inside to outside from Majestic Maiden. Three furlongs. Needs to make up a little bit of distance here. We're just starting the turn. This is where most of my horses will like to stream towards the front. And there does go Majestic Maiden. So as we come off this turn, expected a challenge for the lead. And then drive for the line. So here we go. Are we going to see a bit of separation? Majestic Maiden starting to turn it on. One furlong in the lead. Nobody coming up from the back. And that's just going to be a nice, comfortable, grade 3 victory for two-year-old Majestic Maiden. Exactly what you want to see and exactly what we expected in that field. Not really the most testing of races, but it's a graded race on majestic maidens resume now so a win in the in her maiden a win at grade three 85 percent potential all fully realized this season not a lot of cruising burst but good extra speed not a lot of finish few too many small bars there for me to get really excited about sadly but um yeah okay i'll take that so what we have is a grade two with world retriever as a two-year-old and look at that oh my gosh wild retriever with about 96 percent potential as a two-year-old as a two-year-old come on though not a lot of cruising burst but Good extra speed, full out on finish application. Looks to be like, uh, you know, it's going to stay around that mile and there's plenty of races to win over the six furlong to mile sort of bracket. I'm happy enough with that. That's going to be a good prize horse. Just a shame it doesn't have an extra couple of furlongs in it, which would be immensely useful to go for the triple crown with that kind of potential. I'd love to see where they go. But uh, that's my best two-year-old, it seems. Majestic Maiden now having won a grade three. And Brave Border also. Still got a bit of potential to realize this season. Again, not the greatest of bars, but not the worst either. Full finish, you know, 70% extra speed and 30% cruising versus a two-year-old. That's okay if we can fulfill that potential. And finish out this season with 85 potential for Brave Border. I'll be happy with that as well. Uh, apart from that, then we got our three year olds Gamabo, two Group 3 wins. We still got a few question marks over her. And then we've got Endless Shadow, now five Grade 3s. We need to see Grade 1s. And Sweet Treats, two Grade 2s, uh, uh, sorry, two Grade 1s, a Grade 2, and two Grade 3s. We do need to make sure that this horse is ready to run in the Triple Crown races as well. Just in case. So I think it's going to be a heads up battle between Sweet Treats and Endless Shadow over the next few videos. Just to see them uh, compete really for who should run the Triple Crown races. I don't mind running two or three. 
in the Kentucky Derby to establish the best horse. But when it comes to the Preakness and the Belmont, and especially if one of my horses has already won the Kentucky Derby, I do like to isolate that horse for those races. And uh, we're going to see a real battle there. I think Enla Shandra is going to take it, but Sweet Treats has won Grade 1 races before. And that's something that Enla Shandra needs to prove either before or at the Kentucky Derby before he gets given the go-ahead. So exciting times. Some good horses here. I think we do need to whittle down the numbers over the next couple of months as well. So some of these two-year-olds might be rested or retired to the breeding barn. And maybe some of these will need to be retired over the next couple of seasons. So we'll keep funneling them through. But exciting times ahead. I do hope you've enjoyed. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I've been Chris Army. Hopefully more of this content will be coming out again on a regular or semi-regular basis over the next two weeks. So stick with us, come back, and if you've enjoyed, go tell your friends. Until then though guys, take it easy and take care of yourselves.